Hello and welcome, Solo Guy here, and today I'm doing an unboxing for the Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit Number Four. Now, if you haven't checked my starter kits numbers one, two, and three, you might want to check those out. They are on the channel, Canoes Chemcor. And with this, this is put out by Multi Man Publishing. Quick history on this. This is the descendant, the grandchild, if you will, of the original Squad Leader series that came out in the late 1970s. And with the modules, uh, they finally developed the advanced Squad Leader where they took all the rules from all the modules and put them together. And yeah, you have advanced Squad Leader. But Multiman Publishing also looked at the idea and said, you know, there's got to be a way to introduce people slowly into the system. And that's in about early 2000s, they came up with the starter kit number one, which covers infantry only. So machine guns, flamethrowers, demolition charges. No vehicles, no ordnance, no bazookas, and it was six scenarios. Then starter kit number two added ordnance mortars, anti-tank guns, artillery pieces, okay, and then in starter kit number three, we started to add the vehicles uh, in there, and it's now taking on more and more, looks like advanced squad leader, squad leader not squeal leader, um, and now here we are at advanced squad leader number four, kit number four, so when you look on the back, of course, um, you do get plenty of, you do get a number of maps, you've got your counters, except this time it is on the Pacific Theater of Operations, whereas the first three were dealing pretty much with Europe, which kind of makes me wonder if starter kit number five would cover the Western Desert. I don't know, but uh, they do mention, though, in this part here about, hey, if you want to go with a simpler uh, starter kit, then you start with number one. Now, can you buy this box, open up the contents, and play it right out of the box? Yes. Yes, you can. And I'm going to show you. So I'm going to first unwrap, open this up. There we go. And my cat's talking. Alrighty. So looking at that, let's see what we have here. Boom. We've got our box now. We also have our... They are always pretty cool about including the packing list uh, here, as you can see. So, and they give you all the information in case there's some issue. They give you a, a, a 188 number, email. Uh, they even give you a snail mail address. So it says the ASL starter kit number four should contain one box and lid, check, three 8 by 22 inch maps, M, N, and O, two counter sheets, one rule book, eight scenarios, okay, scenario, starter scenario 64 through 71, and one folded 11 by 17, quick reference data card, and two dice. And of course, they thank you for the perp for your purchase. Okay. So, uh, all right, so here's the uh, rule book. Let's take a quick look at that for a moment. So looking at it, uh, it'll already tell you about the order of presentation. And looking through here, uh, yep, you get three column, you get three columns worth of text, but you have examples that are done in color and in pretty good detail. Okay, and also gets into talking about the pieces. So in other words, if you've not played Advanced Squad Leader, any of the starter kits, you can start here, here with that. Now they also include all the abbreviations that are used in the game. And you know, here's the thing, you don't have to memorize it. I would say that the more you use it, the more you play, 
it, it becomes second nature to you. Like DM is desperation morale, for example. That becomes a fairly important thing. Okay, and you got some very clearly laid out uh, examples here, like the to hit examples. Uh, here it also talks about vehicles with what's considered the front, the rear, the side. Now you may notice like over here you see a couple of what looks like flesh colored or peach colored uh, highlights. And the idea behind that it's showing you okay here's starter kit number four. This is what is new for the starter kit number four. So all these other rules here they are not new to the system. Now, if this is the only one you've purchased, then yes, all of this is brand new to you. So you can see um, it is about, let's see, 36 pages, I think. Wait, yeah, about 36 pages from front to back. Now, I want to point out what's kind of nice is when you got your map with the pieces, but you also have the full explanation and it's off to the side and it is in a different color. I think that really benefits people. Certainly benefited me. Okay. And of course it gets into it gets into the Pacific Theater and the Japanese. And they are different uh, in how they're how they're treated compared to the other counters, to the other nationalities. And then again more and it also gets into the PTO's terrain. Okay, which when I look at these, here's a question. I would love to hear from the ASL uh, folks out there who have this kit and you play maybe DYO scenarios. Do you use these maps for European theater as well? I'm kind of curious. Is it doable? Okay. So that's just an interesting thought. Now in this kit here, it's got Americans versus Japanese. And it shows you the leader breakdown, shows you the squad breakdown, and again, what do the individual numbers mean? And then, of course, it talks a little bit about vehicle and ordnance notes about some of the pieces that the Americans and the Japanese have. So, again, you got more of that uh, here. And then, of course, the credits, naturally. So, what else do we have here? Ah, ooh. Big, big, oh, oh my, oh my, this is laid out, woo, okay, so this is considered to be the quick reference table, oops, the quick reference table, and you have to have your infantry, so here you have your infantry fire table, you have the explanation of what do the results mean, Okay, infantry fire table, DRMs, dice roll modifiers, firepower modifiers. It gets into things like wounds. Sequence of play is important, okay? And if people want to go and make the full jump into full advanced squad leader, of course, it's going to be longer because with advanced squad leader, you can have river crossings and motorcycles and parachute drops and fighter bombers and all those wonderful things, but I would say most of the scenarios don't have that. So really, a lot of the rules in the rule book cover those certain special uh, situations, I would say. And you also have here the uh, terrain effects chart as well. So it does, it does cover a lot of things. The movement uh, factor, portage point charts, okay, that's always, always useful. And again, like I said, this is for the PTO, but I can't see, just looking at it, why in the world you couldn't use that for a regular uh, European game. Now, on the back here, on the inside, you have the to hit chart. And here it's for nationality, Japanese and American. So this to hit chart is only for the Japanese and the Americans, not the Russians or the British. Okay. And that's okay because this is supposed to be a the PTO, not ETO, not overall. But again, uh, you get the rate of fire, you get 
the fire base to hit DRMs, the target base to hit DRMs, bog removal, okay, uh, demo charge placement versus uh, AFE die roll. So, I mean, they take out a number of things and they lay them out, okay. Next thing, I got a map. Ooh, here we go. Now, compared to the old original Avalon Hill squad leader maps and ASL maps, uh, these uh, maps are made of cardboard, whereas the older maps were mounted. And that's okay. I, I'm looking at this and I can't see why I couldn't use this for a European uh, scenario. Uh, with that because the woods look like woods and you know in the Pacific theater it would be jungle you know and then what we look at orchards these would be like palm trees wooden house, wooden buildings the roads you know the slopes the hills all those wonderful things so this is for oh let's see here um, I got another one and here's N. Oops, let me pop that out. So here's N. Boy, this kind of reminds me of the or a, a Cross of Iron board number five. It's got a lot of woods in it. Really cool. Okay. And, uh, ooh, yeah. So you got the road running through. Now what's cool about these maps, if you're not familiar, they are geomorphic in that you can line them up and connect them in any which way possible when you put them next to each other. Okay, uh, you will have roads, you will have roads that go, you know, connect to each other. And of course, in some weird cases, it doesn't seem to be, um, you know, funny you have a little bit of a road there, but you know, the road to nowhere, if you will. Now there is a third map I wanted to show you guys. And here it is. So here's a third map. Okay, uh, this is M. So you got map boards M, N, and O. Uh, there are other scenarios you can download for free uh, from the Multi-Man Publishing site. So that's really nice and really awesome. Uh, now I also want to point out when you can put, you can also put the map boards like this, like end to end. So you can have a pretty long map uh, board if you want it okay now let's see what else i have here Ooh, yeah counter sheets okay looking at the counter sheets of course the thing is these starter kits are self-contained you don't need to buy any other starter kits because it will have all the basic pieces that you are going to need in there. You have some US vehicles, you have Japanese vehicles, and ooh, we've got question marks. I have a question. Well, in the ASL system, the question mark is a concealment counter. And the idea behind that is to hide your unit, so to speak, where your opponent knows something is there, they're not sure what it is, and any fire against it, it's half firepower automatically. Um, you also have a couple of caves. You got Japanese uh, single man counters, some half squads, some Japanese support weapons here. You got smoke. Now these are in fact double sided. They are double sided counters and uh, unlike the original ASL counters, these are, you, you can cut these off at the corner. Uh, that was just how they were cut uh, compared to the old school counters. Uh, and that's why some people, they, that's one reason why some people go and they clip their counters. So here is another thing. Now if you notice, holy cow, this is America. You know, a lot of green here. You're right. It is, it is for the uh, Americans. Okay. But there's a few factions you've got here. You've got the regular army. Okay. You have the U.S. Marine Corps. And you also have the early war American or Philippine army as well. Uh, I think you've got a few of those uh, there. There shouldn't be that many. I think that was the case that they had, but uh, yeah. So you, you have some uh, pretty cool things going on. And then of course, American support weapons and concealment counters as well. So starter kit four, <coughs> excuse me, takes on a new, a new, uh, 
a new perspective uh, with that. And then, of course, you got the Japanese. When you flip on the other side, uh, you, you get to see, like, the broken half of the Americans, malfunction support weapons. And then, of course, the Japanese, they don't quite break the same way like the other nationalities. But you can see a lot of CX, counter-exhaustion uh, markers there. And, of course, it wouldn't be complete unless you got the... Red and blue, uh, not red and blue, red and white dye. Every starter kit I've had has red and white dye in there. Okay. Somebody must like the color red. Now, let's take a look at the scenarios. Ooh. Oh, yeah, and I got this blank sheet of paper, and I got this bottom box lid. Let's take a look at the uh, scenarios here. And so, our first one here is Kawaguchi's Gamble. This is taking place in 1942 uh, when the Americans have gone into Guadalcanal to start the island hopping campaign. And uh, so you'll notice it's half a board, okay? You'll also notice it's relatively short. It's like five and a half turns. You have not that many pieces for the Americans or the Japanese uh, for that. So they kept it a fairly simple scenario. Uh, for that. With scenario 65 called Take It Back, okay, this is also in Guadalcanal, and you have got Japanese and American pieces again. And again, you use half the board, but in it's a different location, it has victory conditions and all that. So, like the first couple of scenarios for this kit, they're not burdening you with vehicles and concealment and all that. They want to slowly introduce you into the system. Okay. Let's see what we have here. We also have Bailey's Bridge. Okay. Again, Guadalcanal. Again, Americans, Americans uh, versus the Japanese. And in this case here, this was Marines. I didn't pay attention to the other two scenarios. So you have Marines uh, versus the Japanese. Okay, and keep in mind the Marines did a lot of fighting in the Pacific compared to the European theater. So that was scenario 66. Scenario 67 is besieged. Okay, so this is uh, Japanese versus the U.S. Army. And again, half, half a map, half a map board, six turns. All right, looking at 68, okay. This is the end of their rope. Now you're using two map boards. And again, now you've got some ordnance. you got like mortars and, uh, yeah, mortars. I don't see any American bazookas here. There doesn't seem to be that much of a need for it. Okay. There is also 69, the stovepipe funeral. Ah, now we get to see some Japanese tanks. And we get to see American bazookas because that would be kind of helpful. You also are using all of board M. Now the cool part about these scenarios is that they do give you a backdrop. They give you the context, they tell you what's going on, why is it happening, what are the units who are engaging each other, and then after that, any special rules, things like that. And that gives you an aftermath, which I find it's cool because not every scenario is going to be 50-50. That's, that's not how real life works. And I'm pretty sure there are those of you out there who would agree with me. A sideshow affair. Okay, there's a little bit more here. Now you got caves. You've got American tanks uh, here. This is looking at Angor Island. Angor Island in September of 44. Okay. And then here, American Devil. This is the last scenario, scenario 71. So, again, this is the Pot Pot Luzon, the Philippines. Again, this is January 45. And uh, now the Americans are coming back to reclaim the Philippines from the Japanese. And, uh, yeah, and again, the, the, the turns aren't all that long. So, is this worth getting? Um... I would say if you are, if you are, uh, 
If you are a collector, of course. If the Pacific Theater of Operations isn't your favorite thing, you still could get the cool stuff in there, like the concealment. And if you want to always use extra counters, if you want Marines and Japanese, you could do that and have them play on an urban board, an urban map board, uh, where they were fighting in Manila, because that was some pretty nasty fighting going on there. But, uh, yeah, I think, it's, I think it's worth it. But again, I would also say to some people, if you know, if you can get your hands on Starter Kit One, you know, absolutely, it's worth it. And I think for the money that you spend for it, for the for you got six games, six scenarios in there, and it's everything is complete. You, I don't think you can go wrong. Plus, you have a very vibrant community uh, out there. Well, hey. That's it, and uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. And uh, with that, I bid you so long. Uh, may your dice roll well, and have a good day. God bless you.